Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on a Friday and it's time for another video. And today I'm going to be talking about Illusionist. I'm going to be talking about Illusionist because you know they've been doing a lot right recently, but there's also some stuff that they've been doing recently that I'm not really on board with, not at all. And I think that it needs to be talked about. So this week we're going to be talking about Illusionist. So, like I say, this is only my opinion, doesn't make it right. If you disagree with my opinion, that's cool. But I want to talk about Illusionist. Now, I have been, um, I've had a love-hate relationship with Illusionist over the years. You know, some of their products have been amazing. Most recently, we did a review show on their Ditto, their, um, um, their pen thing. And I thought that was really good. Really liked it. Really great. You know, you can go and watch the review if you want. Um, they've put some stuff out recently that I thought's great. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give them a shout out. I think that they've been doing a lot right recently, you know, bringing Christian Grace on board and working with Christian. That's a smart call. Um, some of the stuff they've been doing recently with Christian has been great. Uh, Justin Miller, getting Justin Miller involved is fantastic because when you think about illusionist glory days you think about justin miller and i know from speaking to jm he's very passionate about illusionist like bursting forth out of the ashes like a phoenix and you know when you've got jm in your corner you, you know that's an amazing thing to have and vanish has been a huge product for them and rightfully so it's an amazing trick um does does i haven't checked everything out of theirs that's but that's brand new yet but i know they've got a bunch of new stuff um that's 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 good that's good and and they are doing everything right they seem to be more active on their socials they need to be they seem to be um um uh attracting more creators and I, I there's a lot of stuff they're doing that's great really really good in one hand i want to congratulate illusionist i really do but there's something that i think that uh happened recently that i i didn't agree with and not only did i not agree with it i i agree with it part of it but i don't agree with all of it and uh, the, i just think it's going to give people the i i I think that what they're doing here is wrong and I think new creators are going to be disheartened by the information that they're giving out. So what am I talking about? Well, recently, Illusionist uh, posted on their stories on Facebook and uh, Instagram, I think, and said uh, they, they put four um stories up which were just block text with black uh, a black background and the first said recently we have seen two tricks that were submitted to us and that we said no to released with other magic companies so there's a couple of creators out there um that have submitted tricks to illusionists they said no and now they've been bought out through other magic companies why aren't other magic companies saying no to is the next one why isn't the creator looking to understand why it was rejected instead of rushing to, to the next just to get it out? We should want more for magic as buyers, as performers, as gatekeepers, as creators. Less is more. Let's only release the good stuff, the shit that's road tested, the tried and the true, and not the stuff to get yourself a quick buck. 10% of creators make a ton of money, which incentivizes the other 90% to put out any old guff, which crowds the market and makes it harder for the rest of, for the best creators to make their living. It drives the best stuff underground because they don't want someone else to rush their ideas to market and copy them to make a quick buck. This all needs to change. So that's what they're uh, they're saying here. They're saying initially... They've seen two people, two tricks uh, that they said no to, released with other magic companies. Why aren't the other magic companies saying no to? Why isn't the creator looking to understand why it was rejected instead of rushing uh, the next out to get uh, to the next just to get it out? So they're saying they don't understand why these people that have had no said to them by illusionist, why they're not just accepting that, why they're going to another company. And they're saying... Um, that we should only release the good stuff, the shit that's road tested and the shit that's tried and true and not uh, not the stuff that's been put out to get a quick buck. Um, 
That's basically what they're saying. So I've got a few points to say about that. Now, first of all, I'm the biggest advocate. I do agree that there are creators out there. there are, I don't want to call them creators. I do agree that there are people out there that have no business releasing magic because they have no idea what they're doing. I do think that, uh, and to, to their credit, I do think that there's a lot of people that come into magic now and that creators are put on a pedestal and that you come in and you go, oh my gosh, Jay Sankey, Greg Wilson, you know, this person, that person. And very quickly, when you come into magic, you go, oh my God, I want to be that next person. I want to be that Greg Wilson. And you, 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 you see a lot of people rushing to put out an idea. Literally, I've spoken to people that have been in magic three months and they've gone, they've said, to me hey I've been in magic for three months I've got a trick that I want to release and I kind of say to people look you've not been in magic long enough you don't know everything there's a lot that you don't know take your time there's no rush with this but you know there's lots of online platforms like the penguin partner program where you can literally just release anything and you can get it marketed immediately and I know I spoke to Scott Alexander about this before he passed away you can see it in the interview I did with him on talk magic both me and Scott said that there's probably probably a situation where somebody has woken up in the morning with a brain fart of an idea, they've grabbed a camera, they filmed it, they've put the tutorial online, um, and, and it's on sale in the afternoon, and 24 hours previously, there wasn't a trick there at all. And so I agree, in, in one respect, I agree with what they're saying, in that there are a lot of bad creators out there, mainly people that are releasing stuff, not through big companies. And, and that those creators really need to have a quiet word with themselves. I do understand that. What I completely and totally disagree with is the statement that, and let me just read it again. We have seen two tricks that were submitted to us that, were said, that we said no to released with other magic companies. Why aren't other magic companies saying no to? Why isn't the creator looking to understand why it was rejected instead of rushing to the next just to get it out? Now, let's talk about this. Let's talk about a couple of these points. Let's take the first point. Recently, we've seen True Tricks were submitted to us and, they, and we've said no, released with other companies. Why aren't these other companies saying no, no to? Well, first of all, illusionist, I don't know who's typing this, but first of all, whoever the hell's that illusionist is saying that, first of all, you need to understand that that magic company might have seen something in that trick that you said no to, and they see something in it that you didn't. That happens all of the time. Let's take, for example, David Jonathan, who has gone on record many times to say that Snaps was rejected by two or three different magic companies before coming out f through Penguin Magic. I don't know who those magic companies are. David's never told me. But Snaps has been rejected by big companies. Hell, one of the companies might be you, Illusionist. I don't, I don't know. But one of them might be you, I don't know. But there's definitely companies out there that said no to David Jonathan Snaps. And then Penguin said yes. Now, just to be clear, Snaps became the trick of the year for Penguin two or three years ago when it came out. It was the trick of the year. More people bought that than any other trick in the whole of Penguin. And they bring out a hell of a lot of stuff. So for you to tell... Ma magic creators that are reading this, oh no, other magic companies should say no. And that's what you're saying. Why aren't other magic companies saying no too? Because they might see something in the trick that you didn't see. You aren't the overarching gods of magic. It's not illusionist says it's crap. And so therefore, nobody else in the world can possibly ever consider a trick to be good. Who the hell do you guys think you are? Why aren't other magic companies saying no to? Why aren't other magic companies? Because they have a right to say yes if they think that trick is good. They have a right to say yes if they think that trick is good. And as I said, Snaps was rejected by multiple different companies and then was accepted by Penguin. And just so you know, Snaps is one of my favourite tricks of all time and I do it in every single gig. I love, I freaking love Snaps. I think it's amazing. And I think as a concept, it's brilliant. I can't understand why any company would say no 
to it because the second I saw it, I was like, oh my God, what a genius idea. Penguin took it. Now, I don't know why. It was one of David's first releases. So maybe it was because David was an unknown artist and it would be quite an expensive trick to make because it's a fully printed, two fully printed decks. Maybe it's because... There weren't enough routines there. I don't know. I don't know. I've not spoken to David about this. But what Penguin did is I know that Phil Smith got involved with the artwork. I know that Dan Harlan got bought in to do the project with David. And it became an incredible project. But if they were taking your advice, why aren't other magic companies saying no too? Why isn't the creator looking to understand why it was rejected? Well, it might have just been rejected because it didn't fit your brand. A photo deck, you know, when Snaps came out, well, I don't even know if it was you that said no to them, but let's say for a second it was. Let's say for a second it was you that said no to them. A photo deck wouldn't fit the Illusionist brand. Two or three years ago, before you did the rebrand recently, you kind of looked a little bit like Pornhub. You had that dark, edgy feel to you. That wouldn't have fit your brand. Just because it doesn't fit Illusionist's brand doesn't mean it won't fit somebody else's brand. And ask Penguin if Snaps was popular. I think it's the 14th, according to their website, I think it's the 14th best-selling trick of all time ever in the entire history of Penguin. So they kind of did okay with themselves with that one, didn't they? And if they'd been following your advice, they would have just said, you know, whoever, whoever rejected it, I'm not saying it's you, but whichever companies rejected Snaps, we would have been in a situation where it never saw the light of day because David would have gone, ah, well, they, no, this company didn't want it. Fuck it. Back to the drawing board. And, and, and Penguin never would have... Or, you know, if Penguin are following your advice, why, can't, why aren't other magic companies saying no too? You know, maybe it's a case of, um, you know, Penguin, you know, uh, if, if they'd followed your advice, Penguin would have said, no, we don't want it. It's crap. You, you know, this company doesn't want it. And therefore, we don't want it either. So certain companies see things in different ways to other companies. That's why... Every company, everything feels different. You know, an Alakazam trick feels like an Alakazam trick. A Penguin trick feels like a Penguin trick. An Illusionist trick feels like an Illusionist trick. But that's not the only thing. Why aren't other companies saying no too? Because they might see something in that trick. They might see something in that trick that you didn't see, but they don't think it's ready for market. But then they work, they work with the artist and they sit down and they improve it and they get it better to a point that when it's released, it's been taken in a totally different direction. Case in point, gossip. Gossip, which was my first trick back when I came back to Magic, I went to Alakazam and I said, hey, Alakazam, this is the trick. What do you think? And they really liked it. But then sitting down with Peter Nardi, he went and just changed it completely and came up with two or three different routines. He made it a better trick. And I've seen Alakazam take that approach many, many, many times. They will take somebody's trick that's maybe a new creator in Magic and they'll say, well, hang on a minute. This has got potential. This is pretty good. I'm going to buy the rights to it because I think it's pretty good, but I want to improve it. I think it needs to be better. I think it needs to have other routines or it needs to have other things that can be done with it. And then they'll work with it and they'll work with the creator and they'll work with the artist and to the point that they think it's ready. Um, I got bought in a couple of years ago to work with um, Seth Race on Flip Bar. Love Flip Balm. It's my EDC. I carry it around with me everywhere. Um, Seth is a genius as far as I'm concerned. When he put Seth, uh, when he put Flip Balm together, he had some really solid routines for it. When I started working with it, I took it in a completely different direction. I was thinking more about um, uh, colour changing knives and going down that route and having colour changes. And that brought an extra dimension to the product. Uh, and, and, and that's an example of Penguin taking a product and then trying whatever they can in their various different resources to make it the best product that they absolutely can before they release it to market. So why aren't other companies saying no? Because they're not illusionist. Because they might want to be doing something that somebody else didn't want to do. Just because you said no to something 
doesn't mean that another magic company should have said no to. You can't tell me, you know, and you're talking about magic companies. So we're not talking about a self-published trick here. When you're giving your little example, we've said recently we have seen two tricks that were submitted to us and we said no to, released with other magic companies. Why aren't these companies saying no to? So we're talking about company here. So we're talking about a fairly big company. It could be a Penguin. It could be an Alakazam. It could be a 1914. It could be a Volpine. I don't know. It's somebody. But there's a company involved here. So a company has released something that you have said no to. You don't know what's happened behind the scenes with that company. You don't know what's been added to that trick or that routine to take it to the next level. They might have completely redesigned it. They might have completely gone in a different direction with it. I don't know. You don't know. But I don't think it's fair posting on social media because the other thing is... I know that those those creators that you're talking about will be watching Illusionist socials and they'll know you're talking about them. And that's going to make them feel bad as well. And I don't think that's fair, especially as they've... Here's the thing. There are, I said it right at the very beginning, there are people that come into magic that can't create for Toffee. There are tricks that have been released that have been absolutely terrible, right? But But there's been really great tricks as well. You say here, why isn't the creator looking to understand why it was rejected? Well, how do you know that they didn't? How do you know? First of all, did you provide feedback to them? Or did you blanket, flat out say no? Because frankly, if I was in charge of a magic company and I had I, somebody had taken the time and the effort to get a trick and submit it to me, I would have taken the time and the effort to reply back to them if I didn't want to work with them. And I would have said, look, no, we're not going to take it. And here's why. So if you're so let me flip that on its head. Why aren't you supplying the creator with the reason as to why you rejected it? It's you that's rejecting the trick illusionist. It's not them. They've submitted it to you. It's you that's saying no. So why don't you tell them why it's rejected? Maybe you do. But if you do tell them why it's rejected, why are you asking why they're not looking to understand why it's rejected? We have a situation here where either you're not telling people why it's rejected, which I just think is flat out fucking rude, or you are telling them why it's rejected. And then you're just stirring the pot here for a little bit of social media attention. I don't know which one it is. I don't know which way you're going with this. But either way, it's not good. I'm sure that the creator that has been told no by you has looked at it. They're probably really upset about it. They've probably dreamt about working with Illusionist. It's probably been a goal of theirs to work with Illusionist. And you've turned around and said no to them. And apparently, according to this post, you ain't said anything else. You've just gone, no, and you haven't told them why. They're probably a little bit upset about that. They're probably going back and looking at it and going, OK, you, you make the decision. You're saying here, why isn't the creator looking to understand why it's been rejected instead of rushing to, ne uh, to the next just to get it out? Well, also, how do you know that they're rushing to the next? How do you know that? I know from having spoken to a lot of creators and having spoken to producers, how do you know that they just didn't submit it to three or four different companies. It's very easy to submit a trick to a company. Uh, it's logical, right? If you want to get a trick out there, you submit it to three or four companies and then you wait for the, the offers to come in and maybe one company will come back or two companies will come back or three companies or four companies and then you can decide which way you want to go with that. Why are you automatically assuming that they went to you first and then they rushed to the next to get it out? That might not even be the case. It might just be the case that they sent it to two different companies and you said no and another company said yes. Again, it comes down to what one company likes and one company doesn't. And if a company is putting it out there, it doesn't necessarily mean it's shit. A lot of companies, and you know this as well as me, illusionist, you don't have to, you don't need me to tell you this. A lot of companies that when they release a trick, there's a lot of money that's been spent on that trick. You've got to pay for the design of it, the prototyping of it. You've got to 
packaging, videos, instructions, videographers, the cost of creating the um, the trailer, the cost of uh, producing it, shipping it out, paying the artist. There's a million different costs. In order to take that trick that's been submitted to you and then putting it out to market, the cost of that is going to be great. So how can you just assume that the company that has put it out is rushing to put out shit, as you put it, when they've probably got a financial, they, they are planning, they will lose money if they put a trick out and it doesn't sell. So it is in their interest to put a good trick out and not a shit trick. You knew this, you know this. It's simple, it's simple economics. It's simple magic economics. If they are putting a trick out, and let's be honest, there is a million tricks being submitted now. There are more tricks being created and submitted to companies than ever before. I've seen on your socials before, you say that you have tons of people submitting ideas to you. You can't accept every single idea. You can't accept every single idea. No company can. So if they can't accept every single idea, they, aff they can afford to be picky. They can afford to be picky. So I'm assuming that the company that has put it out just thinks it's a good product. And on that subject, you've told, you've said on your socials many times, we get so many people submitting ideas. We get so many people submitting ideas. Oh my God, we get so many people submitting ideas. You can't say yes to everybody. It's impossible for you to say yes to everybody. So you might be saying no, just because you've already got so There's a million reasons why you might not be saying yes. It might be that you've got a ton of stuff that you're already working on and you haven't got the financial resources or the human resources to work on another project. It could be that there's another trick that you're producing that is very, very similar to the trick that's being submitted to you. And therefore, you don't want to produce this submission because you've already got something that's a bit too similar. It could be a million different reasons instead of just it's crap. But obviously, the creator wouldn't know because apparently, according to this, why isn't the creator looking to understand why it was rejected? Did you tell them? Because if you didn't tell them, that's terrible. Because like I say, there's a million reasons why people might not want to um, work with a particular artist. The companies that have said yes, that have released this project, they probably saw something in it that you didn't, or they've got, a, a, and, and they've probably said no to other stuff. They've said no to other stuff to say yes to this. And they obviously believe in the product, I would assume. I would assume they would believe in the product. And you say, why isn't the creator looking to understand why it's rejected instead of rushing to get it out, rushing to the next to get it out? Like I say, they could have submitted it to four or five companies and one or two of them said yes and they just picked the one that they went with. It might not be that they're rushing to another uh, a company. How do you know? Have you reached out and spoken to them at all in any way, shape or form? Then you say, we should want more for magic as buyers, as performers, as gatekeepers and as creators. Less is more. Let's only release the good stuff. I am sure that almost every single magic company that has ever existed has only ever wanted to release good magic with the possible exception of a couple who are going to remain nameless. Everything, that's, that's ultimately the goal. Because, right, if you release good magic, more people will buy it. More people will buy it. It means that, um, uh, you know, that, that, that there's going to be more profit. There's going to be more profit. It's great for the company. It's great for the greater. It's great for all round. Sometimes stuff just comes out and, and, and certain people won't like it. You know, I had somebody um, post on my socials recently and they said, uh, oh, uh, Craig's really good, uh, but uh, Lucky Lotto, which was my latest Penguin release, Lucky Lotto, I don't like this, I don't think it's great, but, you know, I respect Craig. And then literally almost immediately... Somebody else posted and said, oh, no, Lucky Lotto is great. I've bought it. I'm doing it all the time. But I hated Keymaster. Keymaster wasn't a trick that worked for me at all. It's just holy moly on keys. And you know what? That's the point. Magic is subjective. What one person likes, another person will hate. A lot of people, a fucking lot of people, hated the stack watch. Other people liked it, but a lot of people hated it. Can you honestly say, hand on heart, hand on heart, that every single trick that Illusionist has ever put out has been good? 
because I'm telling you right now, that's not the case. I don't think there's a company out there where every trick has been good. You guys have released a lot of shit over the years. Now there's some great tricks that have come out, like the Pointing Book and and and, and Ditto recently. And from what I've heard, the Thought of Card by uh, Geraint and uh, and Christian is good. There's a lot of stuff that's come out that's good, but there's also a ton of stuff that's come out that's not that good. Same as any other magic company. But you know what? That's just my opinion. I don't like certain tricks that illusionists have put out. But you know what? There's other people that are going to have loved them. Magic is subjective. So for you to say, let's release the good stuff, the shit that's road tested, the tried and the true, and not the stuff to get yourself a quick buck, find me a video of anybody doing the stack watch anywhere. Find me a video of anybody who works inside Illusionist, including Pete, and I'm really good friends with Pete, and I love that man to bits, and I do think that he's the greatest living mentalist in the world today. I fucking love Pete Turner, and I think he's amazing. Find me a video of anybody doing the stack watch anywhere, ever. Find me a video of Garrett going out and doing it. Find me a video of, 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 uh, Pete doing it, anybody doing it, like, find me a video. I want to see that video because, frankly, I don't think that thing's been worked into death. And I think there's some things that magic companies put out that haven't been worked to death. And, uh, you know, uh, if they were, why aren't we getting live performances? I didn't like the um, Black Ops watch. I just didn't like the Black Ops watch. It's not for me. Now, I like James Keatley. And I've had a conversation with James about this, that I didn't like the Black Ops watch. That's fine. I've made my feelings perfectly clear on the Black Ops watch. You had Eric Jones turn round on the uh, tutorial for the Black Ops watch and say this is his everyday carry and that he carries this around with him everywhere. He won't leave anywhere without this Black Ops watch. To be clear, this is one of the greatest living coin magicians in the world today that can do things with coins that I can only dream of. And you're telling me that the trick that he needs to carry around with him is how to do a complete coin vanish. This guy has more ways of doing complete coin vanishes that I've had hot dinners. And I've had a lot of fucking hot dinners. That's bullshit. That's crap. That is a trick, as far as I'm, uh, as far as I'm concerned, that has not been worked in. I could go through the illusionist back catalog if you want me to, but that's not the point. You setting yourself up as the gatekeepers of magic, and you telling people that we should only release the shit that's tried and tested and true, and not the stuff to make yourself a quick buck. Now that's true. I agree with that 100%. I agree that there's a lot of shit that comes out and it's not being worked in. And you can tell it's a brain fart and that people haven't worked it in. But to say that that's the case with this trick that you said no to and another company said yes to is not fair. It's not fair on that other company. It's not fair on... Um, the creators of those tricks, it's just not fair. You're setting yourself up as being better than all these other magic shops, which is ironic considering that it was only a few days ago on a different Instagram story that you started slagging off Murphy's Magic and saying, hey, Murphy's Magic, we're not going to be working with them anymore because magic shops have closed down. They're the lifeblood of this industry. And I hate the fact that these magic companies are shutting down and illusionists only want to do the right thing and they want to work with the magic shops because we care about the magic industry. We care about the magic shops and we want to see those magic shops thrive. You can give a fuck. That's by the by. I'm not getting into that one. 10% of creators make a ton of money, you say. I think that more than 10% do, but whatever. What in, which incentivizes the other 90% to come out any old shit. I'd say it's less than 90%. I do agree that there's crap that's put out there and that needs to change. But I think as an industry these days, we're self-policing it quite a lot. With all of the online reviewers, with, uh, with the onset of social media and Facebook discussion forums and Reddit and the Magic Cafe, I think pretty quickly the crap gets caught out very very quickly and I every week like I watch my review show from Wednesday uh, there was an egg bag that came out that was the worst egg bag of all time it didn't fucking work it was terrible I gave it minus a billion percent or something I do agree that there's crap out there I do agree with that but you know what here's the thing right here's the thing who am I who are you illusionist 
And more importantly, who am I to say that something can't be worked by somebody else? I remember when I was doing the Wizard product review with David Penn, and we reviewed this trick, which was this like mechanical bird that appeared on the end of a wand. And we took the piss, we gave it 0%, and we said it's the worst trick that I've ever seen. Fast forward about four or five years and that exact same prop was being used by a comedy magician to get through to the next rounds and boss the auditions on Britain's Got Talent. One man's trash is another man's treasure. What one person thinks is terrible, another person thinks is amazing. Which is why I always say on the review show, it's only my opinion. It is only my opinion. I can say if I like something. I can say if I hate something. You can say if you like something. You can say if you hate something. Absolutely 100% of the time. 100%. But... One man's trash is another man's treasure. And just because illusionist said no to somebody doesn't mean that another company should say no as well. It also doesn't mean that that magic creator should sit around moping around and not try and speak to other magic companies because if that had happened, we never would have a snap stack right now. Uh, um, it drives the best stuff underground because they don't want someone else to rush their ideas to market or copy them to make a quick buck. This all needs to change. Look, on that respect, I can agree with you. Things do need to change within this industry, but they're never going to change. And like I say, all we can do, all I can do as a creator is release magic that I believe in. And if people like it, great. If they don't, at least they know that I've done the best that I can do to release a product that I am 100% proud on. All you can do, illusionist, is just focus on being the best illusionist that you can be. And as I said right at the very beginning of this video, there's a lot going on at Illusionist right now that you guys should be proud of. You're... <clears throat> I, I did a rant on the, on you guys about a year ago and I talked about all of the things that were shit and there was a lot of stuff that was shit. There is less stuff that's going on that's shit now. You're releasing really good products. You're surrounding yourself with great creators, getting Christian, getting Justin on board, Michael and Mar. This is all really good stuff. I speak to people online and at conventions. I read the stuff on my YouTube channel and other people's YouTube channels. Illusionists are absolutely moving in the right direction right now. They really, really are. This sort of stuff where you're slagging off other production companies just because they said yes to a product that you said no to, that's the catalyst for your little rant about, oh my God, all this needs to change. Just focus on you. Focus on releasing the magic that you want to release. Focus on the stuff that you say yes to. If somebody then takes that trick to somebody else and, and you've said no to them, fine. That's not your problem. Who cares? You already said you don't work with Murphy's Magic anymore. You want to focus on supplying directly to magic shops. Cool. If that's the business model that you want to go down, that's great. If it works for you, that's cool. But don't slag off other companies because they're wanting to do things differently to you. I don't think that's fair. And more importantly, and the reason I made this video is it sends a bad message to new creators. I am really passionate about new creators wanting to create. They already feel squashed. They already feel belittled. It's a really nerve-wracking thing to try and do. There are some amazing creators that are coming up through the ranks. People that are amazing. I, I speak to a lot of them that are really, really good. And for you turning around and saying, well, you know what? If one company says no to you, that's it. You should think about what you've done wrong and not do it again. No, here's what you should do. If you're a creator in magic and you want to be a creator and that's what you're passionate about, then fuck me. You should go and do that. You should put your heart and your heart and your soul into going out and being the best creator you should be. Yes, absolutely. You should work on your material. You should make sure it's right. You should road test it. You should make sure it's the best it should be. But if you go to a company and they say no to you, never give up. Never give up up. Be so good that they can't ignore you. That's all I've done. I've had companies in the past turn around to me and say no. Where my first run in this com my first run in this industry when I was with World Magic Shop, I went to other companies and they said no. And then I left this industry and I came back and now they've said yes. Never give up. Yes, be the best you can be. But if somebody says no to you, don't look at that as a negative. Yes, look at why they've said no. And if they offer you feedback, take it on board. But don't stop. 
Put that trick out there. Be like David Jonathan. David Jonathan believed in snaps. He believed in that trick. He thought it was an amazing trick. He got knocked down by one magic company. Then he got knocked down by another magic company. Then he got knocked down by another magic company. And eventually he found a company that said yes. And that trick went on to be one of the best selling tricks of all time. The biggest magic shop in the world, Penguin Magic. It's 15th best-selling trick or 14th or something, best-selling trick of all time is snaps. That is a trick that was rejected multiple times. Look at Premier that's only just recently come out through Murphy's. Murphy's Magic, the biggest wholesaler of magic in the world, has just released Premier and it is selling like hotcakes. I know. I know how well it's selling. That trick got rejected as well by a magic company. I know from speaking to David Jonathan. So just because somebody says no to you, don't mean that you aren't good enough. It doesn't mean that you can't do this. Regroup and try again because every single no brings you closer to a yes. James Dyson, uh, I've got a degree in business entrepreneurialism and I did my dissertation on, a, on the, uh, uh, the differences between James Dyson and Richard Branson. And it was a very, very long time ago. But I remember spending so long researching into James Dyson, who invented the Dyson vacuum cleaner. And you know what? I can't remember the exact statistics because my dissertation was about 30 years ago or 25 years ago. I can't remember exactly. But it was something like he went to about 50, to a hundred banks to get a bank loan to finance this and he said no he got turned back again and again and again and he got turned back at every single bank he went to for a loan they said no because they didn't think it was a viable proposition so he didn't give up and he didn't well go well you know that bank said it's not a viable proposition I'm going to give up he went to a different bank and a different bank and a different bank and eventually he got the money and he got the money and then he started producing the cyclone system the cyclone system that was the innovation that made the Dyson vacuum cleaner what it was and then he started making the Dyson vacuum cleaner and again I can't remember the exact amounts but it was over a thousand different prototypes of this vacuum cleaner that he went through before he got one that worked now think about that for a minute think about try number 999 you've spent years working on this thing you know it's going to work but now you've just tried the next version of it and it doesn't work Work and it just falls apart and it's not and you, you've got no money you're running out of money and the bloody thing still isn't working how many people hand on heart would have given up at that point a lot of people would have but he didn't he continued he continued and he carried on and now he's a multi 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 millionaire and everybody knows who he is and pretty much everybody uses Dyson stuff right the only difference is is that he never gave up and I'll tell you right now being a creator is like being an entrepreneur you want to be an entrepreneur, then you have to take risks. You have to take risks because if you never take risks, it means that you're never going to succeed. I would rather, absolutely, at the end of my life, when I'm about to die, I would rather look back and go, I I'm glad I tried. Even if I failed, at least I gave it a go. I'd rather do that than turn around and look at my life and say, if only I had done this, if only I had done that, because I don't want to live with regret. If I have an idea and, I, and it, it's a risky thing, I'm going to give it a go. You want to be a creator. It's like being an entrepreneur. Don't give up. Work hard. Work hard. Don't give up. Take risks. And more importantly, and this is the single most important thing. The single most important thing is if life knocks you down, you get back up. If life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. If a company turns around to you and says no, if a company turns around to you and says, no, you're not doing that. We're not taking this product. You don't lie down and play dead and go, OK. You then go back to them if they haven't given you a reason because they're fucking rude and they haven't given you a reason as to why they say no. Contact them and ask them. And if they tell you, great. If they don't, no problem. But believe in your product. Believe in your trick. Believe in yourself. Put all of your heart and soul into it and know that if you absolutely 100% believe in that product, it doesn't matter what any other magic company says because you can go to that company. They say no. Go to a different company. Go to a different company. Go to a different company. Whoa. 
work your ass off, never give up and find that company that eventually say yes. And if they don't, if you can't find that company, honestly look at the product and ask yourself, do you believe in this? And if you really do believe in this, figure out a way to put it out there, even if it's self-publishing. Because if you believe in yourself, then that's all you need. If you haven't, don't have a plan B, never have a plan B. You want to be a creator, that's your plan A. Don't go, I want to be a creator, I want to release this trick, but if nobody wants this trick, then I'm going to do this. If you have a plan B, it means you don't believe in your plan A. If you don't believe in your plan A, it means that nobody else is going to believe it anyway. An illusionist, I don't agree with the message that you're sending to new creators. They can do whatever the hell they want to. If they get a shit product out there and it's a shit product, they will soon learn from that. You, you, you are only as good as your last product. And this country, this company, sorry, this, this industry will come down on you like a ton of bricks. If you have not done your due diligence, trust me, I know red EDC Whatever it may be, I know that people can come down on you like a ton of bricks. The industry is self-policing itself. Illusionist, focus on being the best version of you it can, that you can be and stop slagging off other companies and other creators because they deem it that instead of just lying down and playing dead because they said no, you said no to them, they're going out there and they're hustling and they're trying to find somebody else to do it with. There's nothing wrong with that. Fuck you. And as for everyone else, you want to do this? Believe in yourself. Go out there, work hard, take risks, and you can do it despite what illusionists say. That's all I've got to say about that. Mm -hmm.